Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we gather together this afternoon to celebrate the life and witness of our dear sister Viola, we do give you thanks, Lord, for the many years you have lent her to us and her family and to her friends. This evening, we pray, Lord, that the comfort which only you can give will be shared with those who mourn. Help them, Lord, to live in the hope of the resurrection. Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And so, therefore, Father, we commit the rest of this service into your care and keeping. And we pray, Lord, whatsoever is said and done will bring honor and glory to your holy name. These mercies we ask in no other name but the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Kindly be seated. The remainder of the program will proceed unannounced, so kindly follow in your brochures as your item comes, proceed to the mic which is made available to you. We're going to have our first scripture reading followed by the other items as outlined in the brochure. Good afternoon, everyone. Our first scripture reading is taken from Revelation 21, verses 1 to 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he, he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Here endeth our scripture reading for the day. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of this word. See all around the nations the only sound 
is the praises through Christ or King. Slowly the names from the book they are read. I know the King, so there's no need, no need to dread. No more night, no more pain, no more tears, never crying again. Oh, and praises to the great I am. We will live in the light of the risen Lamb. I see over there there's a mansion all oh, that's prepared for you and for me where we will live with our Savior eternally and there'll be no more night no more pain no 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 more tears and never never crying again and praises to the great I am we will live in the light of the risen lamb oh praises to the great I am we I am happy this evening to, on the behalf of our church here at Chancel, the Chancel Seventh Adventist Church, to pay tribute to our late dear sister Viola Griffith. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Sister Viola Griffith was baptized by Pastor Lester Jones on the 17th of August, 1996, and became a member of the Chancel Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am not sure the exact time she started attending church, nor who actually invited her. I'm not sure if it was Marjorie or if it was Lorna. But one thing was for sure that once she started attending, she never stopped until sickness. Amen. The one thing that I'm sure about is that Sister Griffith was faithful in her attendance, to, especially to Sabbath service. There are some things that, a few things that stood out about Sister Griffith that I would like to just touch on briefly. First, she was, when she came into church and she was at church, she was very quiet. But don't be mistaken, don't take that quietness for weakness. She was always ready to smile. And in addition to that, I think this scene by the late Errol Walton Barrow describes Sister Viola to a T. 
friend of all and satellite of none. I think that that is probably a very good description, an accurate description of Sister Viola Griffith. Sister Griffith had a very special place in her heart for her friends. If you were one of Sister, Gr Sister Griffith's friends, you were special. You were a treasured friend. And I'm sure Sister Jeanette can attest to that. Right to the end. However, I must say that being a friend of Sister Griffith, Sister Viola, did not mean that you could easily turn her around. Sister Viola had a mind of her own and was quick to tell you if she thought that you were wrong. Very often, her reprimand would be followed by a smile which would erupt into a joyous laughter. Proverbs 17, 22 states, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. I asked some of the church members what is the one thing that stood out in their mind about Sister Viola Griffith? What is the one thing that they would remember her for? And practically everyone I spoke to said her laughter. Sister Viola loved to laugh. And when she laughed, when you heard that laugh, you knew it was Sister Viola Griffith because it was unique. When I asked my wife what stood out more so she remembered more, she, she said to me, her laugh. She had a laugh out of this world. I remember when she had a very good friend who used to attend church here, Carlos. And whenever Carlos did not attend church, I would tease her and say to her, lonely bird. And in a very stern manner, she would turn to me and say, I don't mind you. And she would give me the look. And I'm sure that Sister Lorna and the others know the look I'm talking about. And then she would smile. And that smile would be followed by an eruption of joyous laughter, which followed with a sisterly and affectionate hug. That was Sister Viola Griffith. My friends and family, she, Sister Griffith may be gone, but she surely will not be forgotten. Revelation chapter 21 verses 4 and 5 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he, said, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these things are true and faithful. My friends, I believe that if there is absence of death, sorrow, and crying, and pain in heaven, I believe with all my heart, then there, is, there must be an abundance of life, comfort, happiness, joy, rejoicing, and laughter. It is my belief that if we are faithful to God in our lives, in the lives we live, it is a very good chance that we will have the opportunity to hear that unique, rapturous, joyful laughter of Sister Viola Griffith again. Thessalonians chapter 4, verse, in Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, it says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you 
by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with a mighty trump, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. In verse 18, um, the Apostle Paul says, Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. To Sister Viola's family, friends, and church family, I encourage you, cherish those precious moments of her, those precious memories. Be faithful to God in your daily living. Live in hope. Hope in the soon return of Jesus and hope the hope of seeing Sister Viola Griffith again. I pray that she will rest in peace and rise in glory when Jesus Christ comes again. We are reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. But I will not have you to be ignorant, veteran, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, then also we sleep in Jesus will also bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall be descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise again. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Here is the scripture reading. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone, not only to those who are here at Chancel, but also to those who are viewing on YouTube. I have done so many tributes over the years for many persons, some very close friends. However, I found this one so challenging to do. Nevertheless, my mother would have loved it this way. My mom said that I was adding her years wrong. She said, Lorna, you are not adding my years. I'm not that age. I am 52. And when I look at her in the box, I saw, well, I, she, like she was really 52. The songwriter Fanny J. Crosby penned a beautiful hymn, All the Way My Savior Leaves Me. Her opinion was the same as my mother. What have I to ask beside? Viola Griffith, or who her children refer to as Ma, knew that God always had a hand in her life. Born the second child to my grandparents, Elmina and Thaddeus Johnson, she was always God-fearing. Her favorite phrase, God sees, he knows, and he understands. Or God knows best, and he understands. Sometimes she will paraphrase it. It was because of her faith in God that she did not doubt his tender mercies, who through life had been her guide. It was his heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in him to dwell, she could have said, for I know what ere before me, Jesus doeth all things well. Man loved her church and her church family. God has certainly led her all her life. She knew him and he knew her. Who else would have known that when she became an adult, she would get married 
and that union would have produced five children, Shirley, Beulah, Marjorie, Lorna, and Judy. Who else would have known that when her husband migrated to England, that she was alone with her five girls, but she had added help that would come from her mother and her siblings. Who else would have seen that her work life would have seen her as a cook and later as a general worker? Only God knew that. So God knows, he sees, and he understands. Although life was a bit challenging at times, God knew and he understood what her difficulties were. Man never doubted God's tender mercies who through life has been her guide. All the way her savior led her and cheered each winding path she trod. Her path led her from Hope Road to River Bay, then to Durham's and back to Hope Road. She was an exceptional rider. Riding her bike was a joy to see while we were growing up and even when we became adults. She also found so much pride in her crocheting. She could read any pattern. Icing cakes and making poon and sugar cakes was also part of her specialty. I remember when our late sister Ursa Skeet was the community services leader. She would always ask my mother to bake a sheet of porn for her. She liked everything in its place and she liked having her surroundings clean. And when her friend uh, Morgan came over to do some work, when she finished, she would say, look, that look nice. And as Elder Barney said, my mother loved to laugh. Any conversation she had with you, she would burst out laughing, and she loved a lot of hugging. Sometimes we would say, man, you just meet the person. Why are you hugging that person for? She said, look, don't mind you. I can remember being at one of our health fair organized by the East Caribbean Conference, and our church district had the letter O, optimism. And my mother was just weighing out the ground provisions and vegetables by hand. At the time, the person who was bagging them said, I could do without putting these on the scale because they're coming back the exact amount that I want them to be. Discipline was a specialty for her. Ask no question. The mere fact that we were punished is because we had done something wrong in a story. Some person said she was stubborn. However, I would say she was independent. I can remember my mother asked Marjorie and I to go to the store to choose a dining room set. We did all that. We settled on what we would have in her home. And then we came by her home. It was a completely different to the one that we had settled on at the store. Then we questioned and we asked her, Ma, why you didn't get the one that we had settled on? She said she changed her mind and it was her money that she was spending. <laughs> Ma loved picnics. Anytime the church had a picnic, she was always one of the first ones to buy a ticket. And of course, namely her friends would be going, Jeanette and Eva. She loved the April Roses celebration, even although she was not born in that month. Fanny J. Crosby said, gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living bread. There is a saying that kindness and words create confidence. Kindness and thinking create strength. And kindness in giving creates love. If someone give her anything, and she saw that it was more than enough that she could have, she would put it in a bag, she would wrap it, and either herself, myself, or my sister, we would deliver it to who she wanted it to go to. When we saw her with things, we would ask her, Ma, where you got that from? She said, it is a friend that gave me that. 
She said, what else you want to know? It was my friend. <laughs> and then one of her friends told me that before COVID, she was spent many hours with my mother. She said that my mother did her a kindness that she don't think any person else would have done. When I asked my mother, so what you want to know for? I leave it at that. Life will test us. Even after we have made it through the storm, life will drop us on our knees because that's what life does. It tests you, it teaches you. The lessons are hard because wisdom demands adversity. So you learn not to hide from pain or run from the battle. Instead, you face them and you rise because you discovered that the only way to conquer darkness is to walk bravely into the light with God's blessings and guidance. Though my weary steps may falter and my soul a thirst may be gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. My belief that promise, and I realized that during the early part of the COVID epidemic or pandemic, she kept saying, Lorna, when I'll be going back to church, I said, man, the elderly cannot go back to church, not yet. We would often sing and pray together. She would be listening or viewing the different services on Zoom. In her trying time, she would keep saying, I would like God to raise me back up. However, she believed that perfect rest to her was promised in her father's house above. With her health failing, she could not be as independent as she was up to three years ago. My always told my sister Judy, come home before I died, and she got her request. We may never understand certain things in life. We just have to leave it in God's hand and trust that he is doing the best for us. And my four sisters and I, the moment that you died, each of our hearts were torn in two. One side fell before it, and the other died with you. We often lie awake at night when the world is fast asleep and take a walk down memory lane with tears rolling down our cheeks. Ma, remembering you is so easy. We do it every single day. But missing you is a heartache that will never go away. We hold you tightly within our heart. And there you will remain until the joyous time arrives that we will meet again. Ma, she has a plaque in her house that says, you are the sweetest person I've ever found. For caring and sharing, you would be world renowned. Work cannot describe how you made me feel blessed. Mom, you're the best. I had the distinct pleasure of just hugging and cuddling with my mother so many times. Told her, Ma, we do love you. Sometimes she did things that we were not pleased. And we felt like she wasn't listening to us. I give in to her because she told me more than once, Lorna, I born you, not you born me. We laugh together, we pray together. We truly never learn what the words, I miss you, until we literally, Judy and I, reach for my mother's hand and there was no response. She accepted that what God did for her was well done. Because when the trumpet sounds and she is clothed in mortal, God will wing her flight to the realms of day. Then I know and I believe that it will be her song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. And I know she will raise a hallelujah. Death is defeated. Jesus, her savior, is alive. And she too will be alive again. Amen. It will be her song through endless ages. Jesus has led me all the way. Ma, you will be forever in our hearts. You like to say, 
behalf of my sisters and I this evening, we would like to say thanks to persons who came by before the week she had died, Sister Pamelita Atwell, Sister Tracy Phillips, Sister Ruski, Sister Dora Graves, Sister Lenora Bino, Sister Cecily Bowen, Morgan Bob, David Rock, Sally Graves, Salwyn Graves, Eva Reed, Janet Kamabat, Sandra Eger, Colleen Chandler, and we would like to thank her doctor, Dr. Jillian Griffith. To all those who call, sympathize with us, and pray with us and for us. We do thank you very much. My rest in peace. Our speaker, Pastor Palmer, before he comes on, we're going to have that beautiful song, I Shall See the King, where the angels sing, I Shall See the King Someday. At the introduction of the organ, our organist is Brother Gregory Green. Uh, as, he, as he gives the prelude, we all stand and sing this beautiful song. Let's all stand. I shall see the king, the king I shall see the king someday in the better land of the world. In his glory, in his glory. In the land, in the land of song, in the glory, in the dead. His glory and his glory, I shall see the king and forever in the spirit to see it was on Calvary. Jesus died for me. I shall see the king so I shall see the king. I shall see the king. All my tribute I shall love. Upon his face, and then my soul shall be holy ransom, and has kept me by his grace. In his glory, in his glory, I shall see the king forever. In his presence, though I was on Calvary, Jesus died for me. I shall see the king. Amen and amen. Can you be seated? Good afternoon, everyone. We give God thanks for the life of our dear sister, Sister Viola. Today we are saddened by her passing, but we have the comfort and the joy of knowing that she lived for Jesus. Amen? Amen. I often say to my congregations that funeral services like these, that there's so many occasions like these that I consider sad occasions. Really, really sad. In the sense that the persons deceased, many sometimes have never made a commitment, never expressed the thought of having served Jesus. They've been confronted many times. He came and knocked on their heart doors, but they never opened and let him in. I call those sad funerals. Because there are many persons who at that point expect that there's something that the minister can do that can transport them into heaven. That don't happen. 
But then there are funerals that are sad, but not so sad, like this one. Because you know the person, yes, physically are no longer with you. But you know they lived and they died with a hope. Amen. And for the next few moments, I just want to share that with us. Let's bow our heads. Father, now let the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. As we said, our sister made a commitment to serve the Lord. And whenever a decision is made for one to serve the Lord, the word of God says that there is joy in heaven. Amen? Amen? So there was joy in heaven when she made that commitment, that decision to give her life to Jesus. Amen. She made a transition from death to life. Because the reality is that you and I, all of us, were born to eternally die. The word of God says in Romans chapter 6, verse 10 to 23, for the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And none of us, none of us really can escape death. Because all of us have sinned and we are all destined to receive the wages. Because Romans 3.23 says also, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And since all have sinned, all must get the wages, which is death. The sad thing is when Jesus died on Calvary he did not die to stop you from dying from cancer HIV traffic accident none of those those are inevitable because we've all inherited the wages of sin, the consequence of which is death. But when Jesus died on Calvary, he died to stop us from going to hell and dying forever. That's what happened when he died on Calvary. He died to prevent us from dying eternally. So you will still die of old age. You still die from cancer. You still die from all the other things, Christians and non-Christians alike. Because we've all inherited the wages of sin. But that text doesn't stop there. It says, but... I like the word but. They tell me it's a conjunction. Whatever went before. If it was a negative, what comes after is a positive. Or vice versa. But. How does one therefore get eternal life? When one makes a decision... A conscious decision to invite Jesus into his or her life and to accept the fact that the death that Jesus died on Calvary, you should have been there and I should have been there. Those nails should have been in Leslie Padmore's hands. Those from of pimplers or thorns, as the Bible calls them, should have been on my head. Those nails should have been in my feet. That sword should have pierced my sight. But Jesus, the word of God says, God so loved the world, somebody say hallelujah, that Jesus chose to die for the entire world. But the entire world, in order to live eternally, must choose to recognize that Jesus died for them 
And they should have been up on that cross, nailed on that cross. And they give this, themselves to him and say, Lord, thank you for dying in my place. I want to serve you. I'm going to give my life to you every other day. Every other step that I take, every breath that I take will be for you, Jesus. That's what says divided. And therefore, Paul says in our first scripture reading, But I would not have you ignorant, to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, Beulah, <laughs> Judy, Lorna, oh, bless the Lord. God says to all of, all of Sister Vice's children, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Why? For if we believe that Jesus died, we believe that, amen? amen. Yes. But the good news is that he didn't remain in the grave. We're going to put Sister Vi to rest this evening and she will remain there. Jesus had already said before his death, destroy this temple and in three days I would bring it back to life again. Friday he was crucified. Saturday, Sabbath, spent all the day resting in the tomb. Early Sunday morning, the word of God says, he came forth, as a matter of fact, Mary and Martha and all the others who went to the tomb on resurrection morning with the spices and ointments that they had prepared fr Friday to embalm his body. But then because the sun was setting, they went back home and kept the Sabbath according to the commandment. But early Sunday morning, they turned about the graveside to embalm the body of Jesus. But they found the stone rolled away. I say, hallelujah. He was no longer dead. Just as he said, came back to life again. He said to death back then, I am the resurrection and I am the life. I am the only one who can. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. And because he is alive, he is saying, everyone who has put their trust in me, everyone who has surrendered their lives to me, because I am the resurrection and the life, when I come again, every grave, whether it be Mount Pleasant or St. Lucy or Cowley Ridge or whatever cemetery contains the body of my son or my daughter, as long as they have lived and died in Jesus, when he comes on resurrection morning, every grave would surrender the dead belonging to Jesus Christ it makes sense to serve your Lord I thought we'd go in church you can go to church from the coast come home and go to hell I'm talking about having a personal born again Holy Ghost filled relationship with Jesus now they say to every one of Sister Vice's children look hey look your mother's journey on earth is ended when she wakes on resurrection morning, she's looking for her five girl children. All you got to be there. And I'm saying, my sisters, all family members and friends, if you want to see Vi again, when Jesus Christ comes again, you got to live like she lived too. There's no figment of the imagination. Jesus says it is real. And to show that he has power over death and over the grave, Remember when his friend Lazarus had died? The word of God says Jesus was out on itinerary preaching. And word came that Lazarus was sick. Jesus didn't stop and rush to his side. As a matter of fact, shortly thereafter, they came back and said, Don't bother now, he's dead. When Jesus turned up, Lazarus was dead for four days. Mary said, But Jesus, it's too late now. He stink. He stinketh. He's rotting. You're too late, Jesus. And Jesus says, show me where his grave is. The word of God says Jesus went into that cemetery. One writer says that when Jesus went into that cemetery, if he had only said, come forth, every dead man and woman in there would have come, come forth. But he wanted Lazarus by name. And he went into that graveyard and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he came up. When he comes again on resurrection morning, the word of God says as he goes and hovers over every cemetery, every spot where his children are buried, he will call them by name. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, it makes sense to serve the Lord. 
When Jesus Christ comes again, and a pastor that can put you in heaven, ain't got no right to do that. And you don't go there when you're dead neither. No pastor, no, no priest, no, no bishop can put you there. Don't be fooled, family members, by believing that when your loved one is dead, that light perpetual is going to shine upon them and the gates of larger life are going to receive them and they're up there joining Heaven's Choir. Nonsense! Doesn't happen. They all go to the grave. Here's what the Word of God says. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For we, this we say unto you by the Word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself, hallelujah, with, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. You don't know, rise down from heaven. <laughs> because you end up there in the, in the first place in that day. Every man, woman, boy, and girl is going to the grave and remain there six feet or ten feet as the case may be. The few some time ago got kept callers and they told me, hey, this one got to go down ten feet. Metal coffin, got to put them down there 10 feet. Just in case that you can put another one, family member, can't put them six feet. So whether go down six feet or 10 feet or 100 feet, as long as they go down in Christ, hallelujah. The word of God says that when Jesus Christ comes, that the dead in Christ shall rise first. I don't want to ask a rhetorical question here today. The word of God says not every dead man in the cemetery is coming up. Only the dead in Christ. And I, it means, therefore, that there's some graves in, 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 in Mount Pleasant where we're going. There's some graves in St. Lucy Parish Church. There's some graves in cemeteries all across the world that when Jesus Christ comes on resurrection, they will not budge. I don't want to ask you a question. Will you be in one of those graves? <laughs> you know who made those graves? Persons who never made a commitment to Jesus. Persons who Jesus knocked on their heart doors and, and knocked and said, let me in. And they said, not yet. One of these days when I, when I get old and retire. Or one of these days when I get married. Or one of these days when I this and one of these days. And that day never came. Too late. Procrastinators always putting off to one of these days. And that day never came. Death came before that day. They would be in those graves. Not in the first resurrection, but the second. Oh, bless the Lord. But the word of God says that when Jesus Christ comes again, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. Brothers and sisters, look. I made that decision many years ago. Though. I want to live for Jesus. So that when he comes, whether I'm alive or dead, I'll be in Christ. Amen. Because I know that I'm going to be caught up in the air. Oh, bless the Lord. When Jesus Christ, the verse 70 says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. I saw just a couple of months ago Richard Branson and Elon Musk were taking people to up in the atmosphere. And it costs a pretty penny to you know. I, I think those who went up there had what you call deep pockets. You had to have, I think, a quarter million or half million to just go up there and go back down here on the earth. I got that kind of money. But when Jesus comes, hallelujah, I, got, I get up and play here. I got to go up in the spaceship. And let me tell you something. I ain't going up there to look back down here. I going up to keep looking up. Are you listening to me? The word of God says we're going to be caught up in the air, up past the atmosphere, the first heaven where the birds fly and the airplanes fly, up 
past the second heaven where the stars and all those galaxies are then into the third heaven as Paul says I knew a man who was caught up into the third heaven that is where so many persons want to explore but will never be able to have access to because God alone dwells up there and he says through his son Jesus I am coming again to receive you unto myself that where I am God is in heaven right now there ye maybe also. Amen. I'm going to sing this there. As a matter of fact, I'll close it with this second scripture reading. I think it was the first one, as a matter of fact. Um, with John said, he saw something. Oh, bless the Lord. Brethren, the word of God is sweet. John, the last disciple to die, the last one, that one who was always so close to Jesus, that one whom Jesus trusted so much that when he was there hanging on the cross, he said to John, John, behold thy mother, woman, behold thy son. In actual fact, he entrusted his mother into John's care. John, he said, John, take care of my mother. I am going back to my father, but I want you to take care of my mother Mary through her old age and her challenges. I believe that you will do a good job. Take care of her. He was the last one to die, Peter and Jake. And all the others had gone. John was put in a pot of oil to fry. And the oil refused to burn him. It only made his skin look good. But when John came out. And they put him on an island called Patmos in the agency. And he thought that he was there alone. My God came down. And was there keeping him company. And Jesus gave John a glimpse. Right down to the end of time. He pulled back as it were. The curtain that separates the present from the future. From tomorrow. And John was able to look down to the end of time and what John saw, John began writing, he said, I saw, hallelujah what did John see? he said, I saw a new heaven hallelujah and a new earth, they got a COVID in there they got a sickness there for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and John kept looking and as he looked he wrote and he saw, he said, and I saw that there be no more sickness no more pain. No more undertakers. Vilnev. <laughs> David. No more undertakers. All of them they done with. Only the upper taker, Jesus. John kept writing, he said, and I saw that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more sickness, no more pain, no more crying, no more death. John saw all of that. And I believe John. John didn't read it in the Sunday sun of his day. He didn't read it up on Facebook. He didn't read it up on social media. You gotta be careful with reading there now, too, you know. Plenty fake news there, boy. John got it from, he saw it with his own eyes. And when he saw it, he wrote it. Jesus showed it to him and he wrote it. I believe, brothers and sisters. That it won't be long before my Jesus comes again. Amen. What a day that will be. You girls may be crying right now. But hey. You may have tears of sadness today. But as long as you are faithful that your mother was. It's going to be tears of gladness when Jesus Christ again. Amen. What a wonderful day. I can imagine all you. Four or five of you jostling for, for, for position to, to, to get close. To hug her to the heart. I'm saying she's going to have room for all of you. But you got to be faithful now. Amen. Bless the Lord. Order your steps according to the will of Jesus. But was my good friend. Very shearing, you know. I, I, I attest to all of the things that were said, you know. That laughter. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know that they were going to break her in pink as, as I was dressing. They said, people on my pink tie. <laughs> oh, my God, I saw her. I saw her. She probably uh, might have said, hey, you know, I want to be dressed in pink. And, I want everybody dressed in pink. Well, I don't know. I just put on my picture and release that she was dressed in pink. But when res resurrection morning comes, I thought that I would have seen her in her red hat. I know she always loved that red hat. <laughs> <laughs> but thank God, when Jesus Christ comes, whether it's a red hat or green hat or pink hat, thank God she'd be clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And you and I have that privilege to be clothed as well. So that when Jesus Christ comes, we can be all united with him. Brothers and sisters, I close by saying, look, life lived for Jesus is real life. 
A life lived for Jesus is real life. It is life that will one day end in eternal life. Amen. So I'll pray this, this afternoon is that even as we are saddened by Sister Vice passing, we are gladdened and happy by the fact that she lived that life. When I first became a pastor of this district, and I learned that she was in her 90s, I've been trying to see her ID card from then until now. <laughs> <laughs> I told her, anyhow, one is the other girlfriend, how old you are. <laughs> I, I really didn't believe that, I mean, she was really sturdy. I mean, that she was well into her 90s. I, I really thought that she was in her 80s. But God blessed her with good strength and health up until recently. And she was there living on her own, taking care of herself, still doing her little weeding and, 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 and planting her little produce and garden on the outside. I mean, wonderful life lived. But the good news is that even though death may have brought a cessation, one day, that life will continue in eternity. May God help us all this evening to order our steps according to the will of God so that when Jesus comes again, we too will hear from him, well done, good and faithful servants, enter into the joy of the Lord. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.
committed by the grace of God to reach Beulah land. Heavenly Father, this evening we come in these quiet moments thanking you, O oh God, for being a faithful God, faithful to Viola, faithful to her family, faithful to all of us, and you have promised us to live with you in eternity. This evening, O oh God, we ask for your continual grace, your continual favor, that even in these trying and challenging times, just as you are faithful to us, we will remain faithful to you. Even now, O oh God, as we prepare to move from this place to take another step to lay her body to rest. May we walk with your sweet Holy Spirit, knowing and holding on to your promises, promises that assure us of a better day. I ask God that you will touch and bless each one present this evening, whether in person or viewing online, that they would make their calling and election sure so that perhaps at any point in time they should lay to rest before you shall come, or whether we remain alive, we will be found living or resting in Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for soothing our hearts this evening, even as we sorrow. Thank you for giving us a sure hope. Thank you for placing a song in our hearts. Thank you for your word, which continues to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Or recessional, we will make use of the hymn of five, two, four. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Five, two, four. Just to know. 
Testing, testing. Your attention, please. Let's bow our heads, Father. Even as we gather here, we thank you for bringing us safely from the place of worship where we had the service. Even at Chance Hall, we ask now that as we gather here by this graveside for the committal, that your spirit be with us one more time, and that everything, Lord, be done according to your name's honor and glory. Bless us to this end, we pray in Jesus' name. For as much as God in his infinite love and wisdom has permitted our sister, Viola Veronica Griffith, to lay down the cares of this life, we now do tenderly commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, with the sure and certain hope of a joyful resurrection when our Lord shall come to claim his own. May she rest in peace.
I invite you to join us as we sing the first hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Blessed Assurance. Pastor Heinz to share a passage of scripture with us. John 14 verses 1 to 6 states, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Therefore, how cheering the Christian hope, for it boils us up while passing through this wilderness of woe. Oh. 
it buoys us up while passing through this wilderness of woe. It buoys us up while passing through this wilderness of woe. It points us to a land of grace where saints with Christ where we shall meet the loves of earth and never Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sin? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So the reading said, be steadfast, mm. unmovable. Mm -hmm. The song says, we have an anchor Hallelujah. that keeps the soul. It's steadfast and sure while the billows roll. It's fastened to the rock that cannot move. Grounded, firm, and deep, we're in the Savior's love. We have an anchor. <laughs>
To be there, what must it be to be there? We have to be there to find out. <laughs> we speak of the realms of the blast. We speak of the realms of the blast. That country so bright. Is fairer than day, and by faith we shall see it afar. 
For the Father waits over, praise God. The Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet. By and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore, praise God, in the sweet. By and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Final hymn at this time. By faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling. Oh yes, in the sweet by and by, oh we shall meet on that beautiful shore by and by. shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed and our spirits shall soar oh not a sigh for the blessing of rest in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful show in the sweet oh by and by we shall meet on that beautiful show to our bountiful father above we will offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessing that hallow our days in the sweet by and by oh we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. One more time in the sweet, in the sweet by and by. Oh, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Sing in the sweet by and by. Oh, we shall meet on that beauty. Sing it one more time, one more time in the sweet, in the, in the sweet by and by. Oh, we shall meet on that beautiful, oh, by and by in the sweet, in the oh, by and by. Hallelujah. We shall meet on that beautiful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just before we have the closing prayer, immediately after closing prayer, I just want to meet with all the family members around the the um, the gravesite. Just have a brief talk, and then we pray. Okay, all the family members, daughters, in-laws, all the extended family. Let's reverently bow our heads. Our Father and our God, we give thee thanks today for our dear sister Veronica Griffith. Uh, an outstanding lady, a member of the household of faith. We are very thankful, Lord, for the impact she has made on the Chancellor Church. Viola Veronica Griffith. We are thankful, Lord Jesus, that even she will be missed by so many by her laugh, her smile. We give thee thanks for her daughters and their respective families. 
We give the thanks for the church family who rally around Sister Lorna and all the, the siblings. May, they, may this family be comforted by the overflowing love from Chance Hall and all the surrounding districts. We praise the Lord for a life well lived, a, a kind, compassionate, and understanding member of the household of faith. And we pray, Lord, that the legacy she has left will remain. And that is to share and to be good, just to be kind, just to be loving, just to be gracious to everybody. We have one life to live, and it must be lived to the fullest. So we give you thanks for all the, the blessings that you have shown on this family. We give you thanks for the many experiences that this family passed through. May you comfort them even around this gravesite. May they be assured of the great resurrection. For in that getting up morning by faith, our dear sister Viola Veronica will rise in the first resurrection. So in the meantime, may all of us, the church family, our neighbors, our community, the wider community, may we live faithfully until the end. This life is very uncertain. We are still in the pandemic. So many people are passing. But may we, Lord Jesus, always live with the blessed hope burning in our hearts. Hear and answer our prayer, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, continue to be with this, these families in their moment of grief and reassure them of that beautiful morn when sin and suffering and death will be no more. Hear and answer our prayer today and bless and comfort this family in Jesus' precious name. Let everybody say, Amen. 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 I just want to meet with the family just around the graveside. And the, youth, the sisters look so united. Praise the Lord. Very good. Be great.